Water has got into the cylinders, and because water doesn't compress, when the pistons squeeze down, the conrods usually bend, fatally locking the engine. But with each cough, there was a glimmer of hope. With the spark plugs out, it might just be able to pump itself clear. The more I drove her, the better she got. And as the electrics dried out, you'd be hard pushed to tell how close she'd come to drowning. So, just how much punishment could this old Merc take? Could it survive a collision with this? Monstrous has an 8.2 litre supercharged engine and 1,250 horsepower. It runs on alcohol and does 58 yards to the gallon, which equals 30 gallons to the mile. <laughs> We'd better get going then. Our lovely old Merc was dwarfed by this 140,000 pound truck. We looked on, knowing we'd sent her to her death. wasn't flattened. It stood its ground, acting like a ramp. The front wheels didn't touch her, only the back wheels did any damage. The Merc's structure was clearly a lot stiffer than we predicted. The passenger side repelled the brunt of the attack, and inside was remarkably normal. But something had obviously been fatally severed as the car's vital fluids were seeping away onto the floor. Mechanic Paul went in to assess the corpse. We thought it was at least worth trying the key, just for old time's sake. But surely she wouldn't move as well. Oh, who needs axles that are intact anyway? A full set of functioning electrics took our mind off the slight blemishes on the bodywork, and we were keen to hear the results of the thorough AA inspection. It's a good car, that. So, how well built are old Mercs? Very Paul, our expert mechanic, confirmed that this was no fluke. Paul, how many call-outs have you been to in the last year? About 2,000. And out of those, how many were old Mercs, say pre-1993? One. And what was the matter with that? It was an immobiliser fault. So nothing mechanical? Nothing mechanical whatsoever. So, we've established beyond doubt that old Mercs are tough. But we still haven't found the limit, which is what we intend to do today, using an arsenal. First up, a test of interior durability. The inside was wearing its 170,000 miles well with every switch clicking like the day it was born. Now, obviously, there's only one way to see how tough the fixtures and fittings are. Grenade! Most of the interior had been vaporised, but throughout the car there were little signs of life. 
See, the electrics still work, Paul. Oh, that light's on as well in the back, look. Is there? And what about the heater switches? Um, gone. <laughs> gone where? Uh, good question, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I don't know, boy. We decided to up the ante. I'm sure you, like us, have often wondered if Merc bodywork could withstand an attack from the cannon off a Spanish galleon. Well, leave it to an expert. <laughs> Strike one. Miss left. Oops. <laughs> Strike two. <laughs> Too long. Strike three. Direct hit. Were you impressed with my accuracy eventually? Yes, very good. Thank Third you. time lucky. Thanks very much. So is the front. Oh, look at that. Now that's what I call proper build quality. Opens and shuts. Fantastic. And the door mirror is still intact. That is a pretty mint door, isn't it? Yeah. Get some money for that. Again, the bits of the Merc that were still standing had seemingly shrugged off our attack. So, for the final test, we decided there should be no holds barred. We wanted to see whether there was any grain of truth in one of the biggest clichés about old Mercs. Are the engines bombproof? As our E-Class burned, we felt sure this time we'd killed her off. The car was gutted and Paul stepped up to inspect the remains. That's yours. Of course, the point of this test was to see how much stick the engine could take. It was a little bit melted. It couldn't possibly start, could it? He's still in, yeah. We held our breath, but nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. It was a car barely alive. But Paul felt he could rebuild it. He had the technology. He could make it better than it was before. Better, stronger, faster. Well, actually, all he could do was get that rear wiper working, making it look like something from the end of Terminator. And then, film fans, just like Lord of the Rings, there was yet another ending. On closer inspection, it turned out the engine was okay. But it was the wiring loom of the immobilizer that had melted and was preventing us from starting it. So, are Merc engines bomb-proof? Yes, but their immobilizers aren't.